All of this is going to be running locally. But again, I'll say it again because it's pretty amazing. No vector database, no text database. There's no upfront preparation that we're doing. In almost three seconds, we're able to go from a full end-to-end -end life cycle of user raising a natural language query, ingesting a new document, text chunking it, running it through a semantic re-ranker, running a prompt and delivering an answer back. Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. One of the persistent challenges from the very beginning of people starting to use generative AI and starting to interface you know, in something like the UI behind me is you have a user and the user just wants to type a natural language question. You wanna be able to, in one step, take that natural language question, the what is blank, use that natural language question to run some type of retrieval activity against the knowledge base, pull back the relevant sources, package that into a prompt, and then submit that to an LM and get a fact-based answer. And you wanna be able to do all those steps quickly. And so it's always a challenge with local chatbots of how do you do it quickly and how do you do it with quality? Recently, we were actually introduced to just a fantastic tool in this type of design. It actually came from our friends at Jinna AI, and it's a re-ranker model. And I think most of us have heard of a re-ranker model or if you've used a re-ranker model at some point, but probably where we were a little bit naive or weren't necessarily even using re-ranker models in the right way is we would always use a re-ranker as a re-ranker. So we would do some type of primary retrieval, whether it was a text retrieval, a semantic retrieval. And then once you, in effect, had your search results, run a re-ranker then that could help you figure out among that subset of search results what was the best result. And so in our view, we would always use a re-ranker in conjunction with some underlying kind of retrieval strategy, typically involving a vector database. Now, one of the things that really opened our eyes when we were speaking with Jenna is they said, check out this model because actually you can, in some cases, use this model without that primary retrieval. So rather than a re-ranker, it's just a ranker. Take text chunks, so imagine if you have a document that's 15 pages, 20 pages, 50 pages, run subtype of parsing and text chunking against it, have a whole set of those text chunks, feed all of those text chunks directly into the re-ranker model. The model that they've built is really small, it runs locally, and yet it handles both pretty large batch size of documents as well as a pretty large context size for each individual document. So the net effect of it is for a lot of use cases, especially like that chatbot, feed the document in, parse, text chunk, run all those chunks concurrently in this model, which is then gonna give a semantic similarity ranking of all of those text chunks with the user query. And what we saw both in terms of speed and quality, and again, doing it all in one step, we thought that this model, it's now one of our favorite models. So we immediately integrated this into the LLMware catalog. We wanted to do a video on this. We also have started to integrate it into some other examples as well. So this is the model. Look, check it out. This is the Jinna page on Hugging Face if you're not familiar with it. But what we want to do is we actually want to show you an example, the core recipe of this model in action, because we think this can be a really powerful kind of underpinning of a lot of locally running RAG-based chatbots. So let's flip over to the example code. All right, I put it in really big font because there's not a lot of code and I wanted to make sure that everybody could see it so we can spend a few minutes really talking about each of the lines that are involved in this code. Now, as I said, this is an example that we have in our repository. It's under embeddings. It's using semantic re-ranker with RAG, whole bunch of directions, whole bunch of sample documents, all that stuff. Go to the LM repository. You should be able to copy, paste, and run the example. The example itself really comes down to just five or six key lines. So I wanna make sure everybody can see them and then we'll walk through and explain what each of these lines are doing. One very notable thing to say up front, there's no database involved. There's no vector database involved and there's no search or retrieval that we're gonna do. We're just gonna parse, break it up into those text chunks and feed it into the re-ranker model. And the re-ranker model is going to be our retrieval strategy for this. So the starting point, just like the way we started the video, user type something in that chat box and it's a query, it's in natural language and you need to be able to use this single query to do these two things, both to retrieve and build up sort of a grounded knowledge source, package that into the context and then feed it into an LM that can then come back and answer the question based on that grounded source. So that is a representative case of the chatbot interaction. So you have a query, 
We're then going to load two different models in this example. Both are going to be running locally. There's the Generi Ranker Turbo on the model that, that we've been talking about through most of the video. And then we're going to pull in a question answer model, a model that's been really good for RAG use cases that can take in a context and answer fact-based questions. So this is the model that's going to answer that user question, and it's going to use the ranked and prioritized text chunks that we get out of the re-ranker model. So for this example, we're going to loop through a bunch of sample files, but really at its core, there are four key lines of code once we've loaded in the models. The first is we're going to run an in-memory parse, and this could be any type of document. So it could be a PDF, could be a Word document, could be a WAV file. It could be any kind of document. It's going to be parsed, and it's going to be broken down into a list of dictionaries. The dictionaries are all going to have a text key to them, and then they're going to have a whole bunch of other metadata in the other keys within that dictionary. But in effect, you could think about this like a list of search results is what we're going to be getting in that parser output. Then we actually run an inference on our re-ranker model. So we've taken that Jinnah model, we've integrated it into a class structure within LLM, and then we've wrapped some additional functionality around it in the inference method. So when you call this inference method, we're going to pass in our query. We're going to pass in all those text chunks in the dictionary exactly in the form that it comes from. We have some threshold criteria here if we want you know, the top 10, the top 20, the top 100, and then a relevance threshold as well. And this is actually what the model does beautifully is instead of a distance, it's actually giving a semantic similarity. So actually higher is better. So you can set a threshold of the lowest level of similarity between query and text chunk that we actually want to consider in the process. Then what we're going to do, we're going to display a little bit of this on the screen, and we're going to use a pretty simple uh, kind of recipe here. We're going to take the top three semantically similar text chunks as they've come out of this re-ranker model, and what we're going to do is we're just going to add those top three sources to our prompt. Our prompt then packages that up, integrates it, builds the prompt for us, and then this is how we're going to run our inference is prompt with source, which takes all that packaged output, the text chunks built into a prompt, it takes the query, it can apply a prompt style, in this case just a very basic default prompt, and then we're going to print that out, and then we're going to do it all over again. All of this is going to be running locally, but again, I'll say it again because it's pretty amazing, no vector database, no text database, there's no upfront preparation that we're doing. We aren't getting any other clues or any other topics or anything, any of their filtering conditions from the user. All we're getting is this query, and we're using just a fact-based extraction of a number from a text. We're going to be looking through a series of 15-page documents. We want to find one number out of that 15-page document, and we want to do it simply with that natural language prompt. All right, so now let's actually run through this example. All right, so as I said, we're looping through document by document. We're parsing each of these PDF documents. The parsing happens really fast. We showed the time. So here we took all those text chunks, we ran it through semantic re-ranker model in about a second. We're then displaying the top three results that came out. You can see this really, really nice semantic similarity score. This comes out directly from the model. We concatenate those three you know, results. We package that up as our prompt, and then we get our answer back from the model. And each one of these cycles, you can see, it's about a second. I mean, the parsing happens in you know fractionth of a second. The inference then, the semantic re-ranker is about a second. The inference then with the LM is a couple of seconds. And so in almost three seconds, we're able to go from a full end-to-end -end life cycle of user raising a natural language query, ingesting a new document, text chunking it, running it through a semantic re-ranker, running a prompt and delivering an answer back. And you can see we've already clicked through 12 documents in the time that we've been talking. And hopefully this gives you a sense of this is a powerful, powerful underpinning for a local chatbot. There are a couple of different examples and use cases that we've built around it, but ultimately at its core, it comes down to really thinking about how you bring together these six or seven lines of code using a re-ranker model in conjunction with a you know, fact-based question answering prompter in conjunction with some parsing capability, and you can do some really, really cool stuff. So uh, check out the Jinnah AI model. Check out this example in our repository. 
There are a couple of other full chatbot examples where this is the engine that we've plugged into it. Go check those out if you wanna see the whole thing in action. So have some fun with this recipe. Again, we're gonna to continue to look for new and innovative models, new and innovative ways for people to be building chatbots, building really innovative derivatives of chatbots, doing all of it in a fact-based way and running all of it locally. So check it out. If you have any questions, any issues, as always, come join us on Discord. Have some fun with your semantic re-ranker and um, take care and have a wonderful day. Thanks everybody.